welcome to the second best web development YouTube channel on the whole of YouTube. In this video, we're going to look at how to use the WordPress REST API with Nuxt and Tailwind CSS. So let's get into it straight away. We will be creating a headless WordPress theme to use with the WordPress REST API creating a Nuxt 3 project and pulling in data from our WordPress API and creating some components in Nuxt using Tailwind CSS and using the WordPress API content in these components. All code will be available at codinggoblin.com. The link is in the description. Okay, so to start with, I'm just gonna create a new WordPress installation. I'm gonna do this on a live server. I'm using hosting app, but you can use any hosting you like. You could also do this locally if you want. I'm also installing this on a subdomain because the front end will be served on a separate domain. So that's the WordPress setup and installed. Now I need to create my theme. So we're just going to FTP into the website and create a new theme. So this way of using WordPress as an API only is known as headless WordPress. So we're going to create a theme and call it headless theme. Now this theme needs three files, index.php, functions.php and style.css um, so we're going to go into the index.php and we just need to include this little script now this script will redirect anyone that tries to access our WordPress site in the normal way it will re redirect them to our front end Nuxt application which doesn't yet exist but when it does that's what it's going to do we need to include this in our functions.php file to uh, prevent anyone from accessing that file directly. And in our style.css, we just need to include some information about our theme. So we're now looking pretty good. That's our theme done. So we're going to log into our WordPress backend and activate the theme. So I'm just going to use the credentials I created just now. And now I'm just going to go to themes and activate the theme headless. That's the one I just created. So that's now active. Now, if we try and view our website, we're going to get redirected to front end. So that's what we did in our index.php file. Okay, and now I'm just going to install the classic editor plugin just to make it a little bit easier to work with. And I also need to sort out the permalinks. Now, you want to just change it to post like that, it makes it a lot easier. Okay, we're looking pretty good. So now I'm just gonna create some pages. I'm gonna create a home page and an about page, and I'm gonna give them some uh, body content as well. This is just for an example. So in a real website, we'd have more pages, but this is just so we can pull in this data and have a look. Once we've got these pages set up, we can actually have a look at the REST API in action. So we can visit an endpoint. So if you go to wp-json-wp-v2-pages, you're going to see the information for those pages that we just created. So we can see here, we've got, should have home and we should have about, and we've got the content. So we've got the title and the content for both of those pages. That's all looking pretty good. So now we can install our Nuxt free project. So I'm just going to quickly do this. It's obviously going to be fast forwardy because it does take a little while. I'm just using the instructions on the Nuxt um, documentation. So I've created that project and installed it. And now I'm gonna install Tailwind CSS as well. So I'm just gonna use the instructions on Tailwind website. Um, one thing to note, make sure you're on the right instructions. I wasn't there. So make sure if you're using Nux3 that you're using the Nux3 installation instructions. So yeah, go through the installation. I'm gonna be using Tailwind UI as well. So I've got a couple of extra bits I need to install, which you'll see shortly. I need to install uh, headless UI and hero icons for view. Um, so this is just because I'm going to be lazy, um, but you're free to create your own components with Tailwind CSS or how, style it however you want. Um, but I do recommend using Tailwind UI if you have access to it. So that's what I'm just doing now just installing those last bits. And now we're looking pretty good. Before we start the development server, I just need to make some changes so that we can use layouts. So I'm changing app.view to look like that. 
and I'm going to create a layouts directory, pages directory, and components directory. In the layouts directory, I'm going to create a file called default.view. This is going to be the default layout, and that's what we're putting in there. I'm also going to create a index.view file in pages, and this is where we're going to do most of our work. Um, this file is going to be changed, the name of it, at some point, but just to get us started, this is what we're going to do. So pop a little test in there, and we can now start the development server. So hopefully everything will be working. Um, we'll see our title with a red background, and that will let us know if there it is. All good. So we want to get some data from our WordPress REST API. So to do this, we're going to use a function called useFetch and we're going to use the URL that we looked at earlier in the browser, uh, the endpoint, should I say, for the REST API, this one here. So by doing this, we're going to be able to pull in this data object. So let's output that and see if it's pulled in. Yeah, so that's pulled in the exact same data as accessing it directly. So looking at this, we can see the pages, the data for the pages that we created earlier. So we've got the title for the about, um, and we got we should have the home as well. Yeah, so about and there'll be home knocking around somewhere. It's quite hard to see, but yeah, if you do a find in page, you can see it. So it's all there, all looking good. So that's pulling in all pages, but what if we want to just pick, pull in a specific page? Well, we can query the slug. So if we just look at this example here, directly accessing the endpoint, home and about, and it pulls in the specific pages. So we can do the same thing in our use fetch function by using this query parameter. So if we uh, query the home page, we'll see that it will bring in the data for the home page. So we can see here, that's the data for the home page. Now, if we change this to about, we'll be able to see that it will bring in the data for about, not that bit, but if we change it here. Pop in about. And we'll see, we no longer have the home data we've got about data which is great so that's all working well now that's all well and good but we want to access the data using our root so putting forward slash home or forward slash about so to do this we need to access the root params in nuxt so we have to change the file name here now we can we can use this uh, special uh, catch all um root by doing these three dots uh, in and slug in brackets. Now we can use use root and we can output this root object and we can see everything that's in that root. So this is really handy because we can now see the parameters. So if we look here, you can see params um, and slug because the file is called slug. So if we can put anything there, like test another test, and we'll see there'll be an array of those parameters. So we, that's really handy because now we can now access those. So we want to access these parameters in our slug file. See how it changes as we change the root. So we're going to save this, or should I say store this in a constant called slug. And we want to send this slug value along with our get request so we can get the exact page that we want. Now we also want to add some logic so that if there is are no parameters in the root it defaults to home. So that's what this logic does here. It also gets the last parameter because it is always going to be an array of parameters so we want to get the last one. So that's what this little bit of logic does here. So we want it to be home if there's no parameters like that. We want it just to default to home which hopefully should make sense. Now, if we output the slug, uh, we can see how it changes um, and we can see what we get, what's gonna be sent along with our get request. So yeah, so there's nothing, so it defaults to home and then we put it there. But anything we put is what gets assigned. Or should I say the last, the last parameter is what gets assigned to slug. So about, or nothing goes home or home obviously stays at home so that's hopefully pretty self-explanatory so so let's have another look at our data object make sure that it is bringing in the specific pages so this should be home 
because we have nothing there and this should be about and it is so that's great that's working as it should now let's have a look at just outputting the specific parts that we want so we want the title and the content so if we check the object we can see title rendered that's how we access the title and it's going to be content rendered for the content as well now it's a bit of annoying behavior with wordpress i guess it's useful for some people but the content actually comes with p tags surrounding it which isn't ideal but fortunately there is a way of solving this so you can see here we've got the p tags around the content but all we have to do is go into our functions.php in our theme and add this filter and that will just sort out the, the p tags it will get rid of them so i don't know why it isn't like that as default but you know it's easy enough to solve so that's that sorted let's just hide this data object again so we can actually see a bit more clearly what's going on like that and it should just be the title and the content so that's good okay now i want to create a component with some tailwind in so i'm going to use a header from tailwind ui just a simple centered header and i'm going to use the well i'm just going to copy it and paste it into a new component called header first and then once that's done we're going to just tidy it up a little bit and i want to pass the title and the content as props to this newly created header component so that's working just as default so now if we create the props on the header component so we're going to create a title prop and a subtitle prop now i know that it isn't really a subtitle prop it should be a content but this is just for demonstration purposes so i'm just gonna whack it in there as a subtitle um this isn't how you would do it if you were gonna actually make a website but in the next video you'll see in more detail how it all comes together um and i'll, I'll do it more more of a realistic example so we want to output these props to our component the title and the subtitle and then in our slug dot view we want to actually pass these props from the data object that's returned from the get request and then once they're in our or should i say been, have been passed to our component our component will be able to output them and because it's done with Tailwind and Tailwind UI specifically, it just looks really nice. So there you have it. So you can see our about, change that to our home and it will have our home content. So that's the basics. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to deploy this to a live server, how to get your SEO sorted, how to get all your meta tags in there how to take your advanced custom fields to the next level so you can actually style your components and anything else that I've forgotten to mention here. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel and see you next time.